Hi guys, my name is Lulu and welcome back to another rendition of Craft and Chat. It's been a little while since I've made one of these, so if I sound a little bit nervous, that's why. But today we are going to take a look at the Dresden Files newest book, Peace Talks, while you get to see some time lapses of some artsy, craftsy stuff that I've done along the way. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. Okay guys, elephant in the room. Was the wait worth it? We all know, well, those who follow the Dresden Files knows that this book has been a long time coming. I want to say it has been three or four, no, 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 no. It's been four or five years since the book has come out or since the last book has come out. So we have been waiting for a while. And now that we have it, it is considerably shorter than any of Jim Butcher's books in the past. Now the reasoning for this, it turns out, is that Peace Talks itself was actually way too big when Jim Butcher finished it. So instead of having this huge volume of a story that you pay a lot of money for, the giant book has been split up into two smaller books for a drop in price, if I am correct so that we can enjoy the story without being overwhelmed by the length. Some people weren't happy about that. I was, I'm, I'm okay with it. But so the question is, well, was the wait worth it? Honestly, my answer, yes. Yes, it was. Peace talks seamlessly flows together into the Dresden narrative. Really the most jarring bit was the time not in how long the book came to take out, but so we rejoin Harry a mere month or so after the previous book ended. Usually we have the time lapse of around a year in between book time, so time in the book. And compared to the several years real time we waited, it was kind of jarring to suddenly be thrown into it with so little time having been passed. Of course, if I had reread Skin Game before starting Peace Talks, the short time span wouldn't actually have been an issue. But uh, that aside, returning to the Dresden verse, it, it felt like a warm hug from an old friend. Neither Jim Butcher's writing nor James Marster's acting skills skipped a beat as the story opens with one of my favorite aspects of the series. It started with a normal day. In this case, we join Harry and Thomas for a run on the beach. Now don't get me wrong, I know this is a modern fantasy series. We have fairies and wizards and touches of science fiction with the outsiders. There is witty dialogue, intrigue, action, betrayal, magic, and in the midst of all of this supernatural, fantastical version of modern day Chicago, Harry Dresden is going for a run. Dr. Mike would be proud. I love books for the small details that so often get left out of movies and TV shows. Harry's love for a cold Coke and Burger King, his longing for a steak sandwich, specifically Max steak sandwich as comfort food. It, it's his defiance insistence on drinking Max beer cold and the humorous reaction you the viewer may feel at such blasphemy. All of this creates a, a very real sensation from Harry. Yes, he's more powerful than he's ever been. Yes, he's supernatural. What he's in supernatural waters deeper than than he is tall. But Harry is still very human. He still values family, a home, friendship, and love above above everything. And even as a full fledged adult, dude still misses his parents. These are all things that I, as a reader, can connect to. Getting to know Harry's humanity is what makes me root for him as a protagonist. And since Peace Talks begins with such a humanizing scene, that makes the conflict all the more exciting and stressful once the peaceful bits are short-lived. Because once the action starts, we jump full force in all of the chaotic bits of Peace Talks. 
We have our chase scenes, we've got fights, both magical and physical, we've got low stakes conflicts that ultimately affect the high stakes ones. And of course, in between we have these slices of romance and witty dialogue and Murphy being a badass bitch. Cause Murphy is always a badass. Like it doesn't matter if she doesn't know anything about the magical world or when she knows everything and knows just how tiny she is. Like, she's book one Harry, almost. She's just, she might not be very strong in the sense of having magical powers or magical influence, but she has her knowledge, she has her, her confidence, and she just, she definitely stands her own. I'm a, I'm a Murphy fan, if you haven't noticed. And, but, you know, going back to the book itself, I will admit the pacing of Peace Talks is a little off. The plot seems to surge forward only to come to a disjointed stop and then go all systems forward again. I found it a little difficult to follow which bits were the most urgent, thanks to so many, like, little side tangents. Like, they would go, all right, guys, this is the big conflict. Where'd it go? Because now we're over here. And okay, we're back. This is the big, oh wait, there's a bigger conflict. Do we still, ca we still care? Okay, we still care, but it's on the, but wait, now the huge conflict is on the back burner. And that's just kind of how it felt. But if I'm going to be honest, like maybe that was the point. Maybe that was part of the point. Maybe the story was intended to be an awkward trot bareback over uneven ground. Maybe that's what makes the sudden ending feel so acceptable and knowing battleground is only a few months away just kind of makes it even easier to swallow that the book just kind of stops i i thoroughly enjoyed this book uh it reminded me that when i inevitably do read the whole series again there will be all these small details that i didn't even think to look for before you know, all in all, I would give Peace Talks a solid 6 out of 10 on the Daniel Green rating scale. Short, perhaps, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed the ride, guys. Now, you might be wondering, okay, cool, but what does this review have to do with the embroidery in the background? Well, it was supposed to be fan art. Originally, I wanted it to be Mab and Titania in two different embroidery hoops. And after a few failed sketches, which will be at the end of this video, it just, it wasn't working. So I decided to do the Winter Lady instead. Only once I got into the embroidery bits of it, it, it really doesn't look like, it, it doesn't look like her, you guys. It just doesn't. But I didn't want a second failed recording. So we will just call it Art Inspired By the winter lady or at least the winter lady's mantle and before i did this one i had started with a completely different idea that was in a quarter neutral territory sign i actually love how that project turned out but it took me a little while to get the recording part right and as a result most of my footage came out with the motioning motion sickening levels of shaking and i was only really able to salvage small bits of the process. Definitely not enough for a review. And both last and unfortunately probably also least are the failed sketches. I may actually revisit these with uh, Procreate and try to fix some of them a little bit digitally because each one has a few aspects that I don't entirely hate, but just, you know, it didn't pass the test. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's it for my art and review of Peace Talks. I hope you all enjoyed our chat today, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.